Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. It was only a matter of time before the coping left media had to admit the truth. And finally, here we are. Just what is it, three weeks from election day for midterm 2022? The polls start to shift and the polls start to shift hard. This is exactly what I've been saying. There's a lot of people who are saying, I don't know, I'm unsure, I'm a Democrat, I'll probably vote Democrat, or just outright undecided in general. But the closer and closer you get to election day, the more real it becomes, the more people start to think about the actual consequences of voting Democrat or voting in general, and the numbers start to shift. The partisan element starts to fade and people start to actually think about results and policy. Closer to election day, conservatives always make a gain. Well, folks, when it comes to independence, undecided, and the most important voter block there is, independent women and suburban women, Republicans are making massive gains ahead of the election. And it's gotten to a point where we've seen the hopium copium left who keep pushing this narrative, women are gonna vote for the Democrats because of the Dobbs decision. Joe Biden keeps saying, oh, Republicans, you angered the women of this nation and it's gonna backfire. Well, not exactly. As now even the New York Times, the very far leftist New York Times, is forced to admit Republicans are winning over independent women. Oh, those poor saps at the New York Times editorial board who had to green light this story. Let me show you guys exactly what's going on here. We've got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, here it is. I'm going to pretend to be a coping leftoid, waking up, drinking their coffee, and reading the New York Times this morning. Republicans gain edge as voters worry about economy. Time slash Siena poll finds. With the elections coming this month, independents, especially women, are swinging to the GOP despite Democrats' focus on abortion rights. <laughs> No, it can't possibly be. This isn't the narrative that was implanted into the chip in my brain. Well, leftoids, like I always say, you might not like reality, but you don't have a choice. You just gotta accept it. Let's keep reading. Republicans enter the final weeks of the contest for control of Congress with a narrow but distinct advantage as the economy and inflation have surged as the dominant concerns, giving the party momentum to take back power from Democrats in next month's midterm elections. The poll shows that 49% of likely voters said that they plan to vote for a Republican to represent them in Congress on November 8th, compared to 45% who plan to vote for a Democrat. The result represents an improvement for Republicans since September, when Democrats held a one-point edge among likely voters in the last New York Times slash Siena poll. The October poll's unrounded margin is closer to three points, not the four points that the rounded figures imply. With inflation unrelenting and the stock market steadily on the decline, the share of likely voters who said that economic concerns were the most important issues facing America has leaped since July to 44% from 36, far higher than any other issues. And voters most concerned with the economy favored Republicans overwhelmingly by more than a two to one margin. And there you see, finally, they have to admit reality. We've been saying this for a while now, basically since inflation started to really spike and the market started to react, that this was going to be the headline issue. And there's nothing despite their best efforts that Democrats can do to change that. But here's where it gets really bad for Democrats. The biggest shift came from women who identified as independent voters. In September, they favored Democrats by 14 points. Now, independent women backed Republicans by 18 points. A striking swing given the polarization of the American electorate and how intensely Democrats have focused on that group and on the threat that Republicans pose to abortion rights. The survey showed that the economy remained a far more potent political issue in 2022 than abortion. Obviously, because the issue of abortion is a culture war issue, and it's not something that's impacting you right now. You know, if you're a woman who's responsible and has their stuff together, which is of course a good majority of women and people in general, the Supreme Court making a decision to move the abortions issue from a federal level to the state level isn't something that's directly impacting you right now. It's only impacting a very small minority of people who are living, let's just admit it, irresponsible, promiscuous lives and don't want to have to deal with the consequences of their actions. That's not most people. And so when push comes to shove, the closer you get to the election day, people are going to have to weigh two 
things. Am I going to vote based on this issue that doesn't really affect me, but I like to, I don't know, post on Instagram about, or that celebrities are talking about? Do I vote as an activist? Or do I vote for economic policy that's impacting me, my family, and my community directly each and every single day and is getting worse, and this current administration is mismanaging to a criminal degree? And this is exactly what I've been saying. Don't play into the Democrat games. Focus on good policy. Focus on what's actually impacting people, because the closer you get to election day, the more the nonsense and garbage distractions that we're seeing from the left, from the Democrats, the more they'll just fizzle out, they'll dissolve. Nobody cares. It doesn't have real, long-lasting impact on people's lives. Being unable to afford gas and feed your family, living in a community that's riddled with crime, tackling those issues is the winning strategy. And boy, is it paying off. I keep saying the same thing, and I've been saying it for months, that Democrats are making a serious miscalculation, and we are seeing that exact miscalculation. People have real grievances, especially over the last two years. You know, it's not just inflation, it's everything that the Democrats have been doing. Common sense, logical people are looking at the open border, at the crime, the attacking police officers, arguing for no limits on abortion up to nine months. The failure in Afghanistan, the expansion of the welfare state, and all the crazy spending, the lockdowns and firing people for their own private medical situation. People are looking at this stuff and they're saying, what the hell is going on with Democrats? And that's why we're seeing Republicans perform so well. And it's why we're seeing some Republicans overperform in what we know as historically Democrat areas. For instance, in New York, Lee Zeldin is now neck and neck in the polls in the last two polls released with Kathy Hochul. A Republican might win the governorship in New York. A Republican might also win the governorship in the state of Oregon. Well, it's because of the messaging. The number one issue in New York City is crime. And Democrat Kathy Hochul still hasn't taken a strong stance against crime. She still refuses to go after the failure of no cash bail. Meanwhile, Lee Zeldin is planning to declare an emergency on day one in office if elected as New York governor, as polls show a race that's a toss-up. You have this Democrat unwilling to do anything, and you have a Republican who's saying day one in office, I'm going to declare an emergency and I'm gonna do something about it. People are waking up like never before. And like I always say, folks, it's the mama bear that you don't wanna piss off. Well, Democrats have taken so many voter blocks for granted. They've taken the Latino vote for granted, the black vote. And of course, they're taking the woman vote for granted as well. Like these people are just gonna show up in historic numbers every election for us because we're the compassionate liberals. No, it's not gonna happen. We are seeing it in the data. And I know I tend to be overly optimistic stick with this stuff and tend to view everything with the glass half full instead of half empty. But this shift is happening and I believe that it's going to be monumental. I don't think the majority of polls have tapped in to what's going to happen on November 8th. I mean, folks, just think about it. The leftist New York Times just came out with a poll showing a shift in independent women from supporting Democrats at a plus 14 or was it plus 18? Let me get the numbers real quick. One second. In September, independent women favoring Democrats by 14 points, which shifted to plus 18 for Republicans in one month. The closer we get to election day, the more this is going to continue. And trust me, Democrats are also lucky that the election is November 8th and not later in the month after the CPI report for October gets released. This election is going to be a referendum on leftist politics, leftist policies, Joe Biden, the Democrat agenda, which continues to go further and further far left. You can only go so far until the people check you. And that's exactly what I think we're going to see here, friends. Democrats are about to get checked. And it's the mom of the house, it's the mama bears, like I keep saying, that are gonna do the checking. And also, always remember, there's a lot of households where the mom manages all of the voting. There's many husbands who aren't necessarily paying attention, and they're just gonna cast their ballot with their wife. Democrats are in for a historic shellacking if this data is correct. And I'm pretty sure it's right on the money. Of course, we'll have to see, and of course, I will keep you guys updated with everything. But that's what I got for you guys on this one. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, and possibly Possibly subscribe to the channel if you guys are up for joining us here. I'm going to get back to work. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.